Whiplash is what you get when your car is rear-ended. Sometimes the symptoms are not immediate, so you think you're okay, but they can be excruciating and healing can take a long time. Whiplash is the title of a composition by jazz musician Hank Levy, who apparently often wrote in unusual time signatures, which is what some of us think jazz is. But I'm no musician. Whiplash is a complex piece and quite interesting. Like its physical counterpart, it's unpredictable. And I commend to you uh, YouTube, where you can go and, uh, and, and hear groups playing Whiplash. Whiplash, the movie, is about the experience of a young drummer at a prestigious music school. Andrew wants to be a great drummer. Like every 19-year-old, he thinks he's good, and he wants to be noticed and noted for his talent. And he gets noticed by the leader of the school's all-male ensemble called the Studio Band. J.K. Simmons in this role won Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars as he plays Terence Fletcher, a psychologically and physically abusive band leader. As such, he embodies whiplash as he is completely unpredictable keeping the students off balance between hints of encouragement and brutal bullying tirades. He justifies his twisted philosophy that abuse draws out greatness, with an equally twisted story about how Charlie Parker was once so humiliated that he practiced himself into brilliance. And if humiliation could create his greatness, then who knows what Terence Fletcher could create. So this is his MO. And what he creates is terror, depression, anxiety, and anger, where once there was joy and hope. Where he seeks to be distinguished as the teacher that launches greatness upon the musical world through jazz competitions, what he really launches is destruction and fear. Though the people who love and support Andrew keep him from being completely destroyed, he also has to find his own inner strength and self-respect. He learns that there are many kinds of power and that he has to choose which kind will guide his life. This is a difficult movie to watch. Its portrayal of psychological abuse is spot on. Simmons, who plays the gentle, loving dad in Juno, is a brilliantly scary guy in this movie. The reviews of this movie argue about its jazz accuracy and who the true jazz heroes are and how it's not a great movie about musicians and music. And that's true, because it isn't. It's a movie about power. It's about choosing which power you will live out of, and it's about how different kinds of power live side by side in this world. First one kind seems to have the world in its hand, and then sometimes the other, and sometimes the good kinds are prevailing, and then boom, the ugly seems stronger, and it's so frustrating. But still, in the midst of the frustration, in the midst of the truth that there is no one power that has the leading edge, it seems, at any given time, still, you have to choose which power you will side with and out of which power you will live. And this has always been true. Kayla Mueller was a young American aid worker who was abducted by the extremist group known as ISIS after leaving a Doctors Without Borders base. Her death at the age of 26 was announced about six weeks ago. Her Christian and Plum Village Buddhist traditions sustained her, and in a letter she was able to write to her family, she said, I have come to a place in experience 
where in every sense of the word I have surrendered myself to our creator, because literally there was no one else. And by God and by your prayers, I have felt tenderly cradled in free fall. I have been shown in darkness light, and have learned that even in prison, one can be free. I am grateful. I have come to see that there is good in every situation. Sometimes we just have to look for it. I pray each day that if nothing else, you have felt a certain closeness and surrender to God as well, and have formed a bond of love and support amongst one another. Ms. Mueller chose to live out of the powers of authenticity, goodness, faith, and hope, both when she was free, when she was in danger, and when she was captured and impacted by the opposite powers every day. In our gospel story, remembered at this time every year, Jesus creates a little drama about power. At the other end of town, Roman soldiers on horses clanking with armor are marching into Jerusalem to make a statement to the gathering Jewish pilgrims. It was Passover, a celebration and remembrance of being set free from slavery. And so among an oppressed people, it might be hard at such a time to tell the inebriated from the seditious. And I suspect it was commonly known to be a situation of shoot first, ask questions later. The military parade would serve as a warning from the seat of Roman power that there would be no freedom this year. And then there was the goofy rabbi coming into town at another gate, riding a donkey, legs dragging, giggling hosannas, palm branches forming a highway of honor in front of the nudge snort. King of Israel. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Maybe it looked silly, but if you cared, there might be fighting words. He was after a kingdom. The kingdom he was after was where a person sows good seeds on rich soil and rocky land, the same, no matter what. You never know what'll grow. In the kingdom he was after, something lost, be it keys or a coin or a soul, is lost with, and with, is sought with diligence, and when it is found, everyone rejoices. The kingdom he was after was like a seed so small that you'd overlook it. And then when it became a shrub, you might still think it was of no consequence but it's still essential on so many levels. In the kingdom he was after, there is no rule more important in any culture or religion than taking care of people no matter who they are, and you go out of your way to do it. Heaven on earth. In his book, Convictions, Marcus Borg said, if Jesus had wanted to avoid the political connotations of kingdom language, he could have. He could have spoken about the family of God, or the people of God, or the community of God, or the kinship of God, but he didn't. He talked about what life on earth would be like if God were king, rather than the rulers that people knew. And it scared the big jeebers out of those who got to pick who got the best chance at a good life, and who should live and die, and who mattered, and who deserved mercy. Scared them. Heaven on earth is not the best deal if you're in charge of that kind of power. And while it's easy to point fingers, the truth is, we all have that kind of power. That's why the way of Jesus is such a challenge and takes such diligence. Because mercy is a spiritual practice. We decide all the time who we'll forgive and who we will carry around in our basket of anger forever. We have that power. The practice of sowing good everywhere, not just the fun places of life or with the fun people, is a spiritual practice. There are pleasant people and places in our lives and darn rocky ones, and we can be equally kind and generous or not. We have that power. Humility, 
Wishing the best for all people is a spiritual practice. It's easier not to, especially when we're hurried and late for work. But we have that power. Compassion is a spiritual practice. Or we can ignore suffering, especially in those that we feel don't deserve care. We have that power. And I don't know about you, but I have to arm wrestle with this stuff all the time. If you're going to be deprived of something, dignity, opportunity, stuff, getting to work on time. So the other kings, Roman and religious authorities, they couldn't have heaven on earth talk going on. Some people might want it. Better to let them hope for a heaven that comes after death. That would work. The rabbi might have looked like a clown on that donkey, but they knew better. Palm Sunday is about power. The good news is that we have heaven on earth power. We get to practice it. And we have each other for encouragement and the grace of God to pick us up when we fail. That's what I depend on every day. Even in the midst of all the powers, we get to practice this one. And the good news is that we are made for this to sow good seeds and water the ones that we see in each other, to not give up on each other, to recognize the dignity of sacred humanity in each one, to show mercy. It's the light of who we are. It's the life into which we are baptized. It's the image of God, and we are created in it. As we move through Holy Week in the coming days, we recognize it in Jesus' story. And as we do, may we recognize it in our own. Thanks be to God. Amen.